In 2019, Robert Freeman, the Beatles' favourite photographer, passed away. Now, as tragic as that event was, what happened after his death was callous to the point of heartlessness. As it has it, Robert Freeman is responsible for some of the most iconic album covers in pop. He worked with the Beatles throughout most of their career. He was intimately connected with them. In fact, he lived just downstairs from John Lennon for ages. Paul McCartney wrote lovingly of Robert Freeman when he heard about his passing. One of those most iconic images is from the album Meet the Beatles. In the States, it's called With the Beatles, but you know the image. It's those, the four of them, side-lit, stark, black and white, hearkening back to those days of Hamburg when they were, you know, hanging out with art students and, and, and being kind of, you know, really kind of at the, at the edge of things and experimenting with ideas. That it looks like this is the result of a, a meticulously planned photograph that, you know, somebody really give this some thought. But in reality, it was taken in a corridor in a hotel in Bournemouth, of all places, and simply shot next to a window. Hence that strong sidelight. Robert was working under the constraints of having to make an, an album cover, so it needed to be square. And you can see in the processes that they start off with the four heads side by side, and then trying out things, and ultimately ending up with the photograph that we, we have, where ring goes down the bottom, not simply because, you know, of some sort of grand plan, but merely because Robert Freeman said that Ringo was the, the shortest. <laughs> and also he was the newest in there. So the stories behind these seminal photographs in history, absolutely fascinating. And that's what makes what happened after Robert Freeman's death a, a huge tragedy. Because a few weeks after his passing, his entire archive, all of his photographs, all of his diaries that he kept from his time with the Beatles and were stolen from his house. This photographer's legacy, everything that he had worked on, his life's body of imagery and thoughts, his legacy has been taken away from him and, you know, just, and sold to the highest bidder. The irony was that he was in conversation with the v &A and and I believe a place in Switzerland just before his death about getting some sort of retrospective together. Because like a lot of photographers, he, he felt he wasn't getting enough exposure for his work. He wasn't as, as well remembered as, as people like, say, Duffy or, or David Bailey. And, and I have to admit that I'd never really heard his name. I find that bizarre that a photographer who is so intimately connected with one of the great cultural icons of the 20th century, the Beatles and John Lennon, is, is almost a cipher. And that's the tragedy about a lot of photographers, is that they slip through the cracks, they disappear, they don't get exposure. For whatever reason, their archives are, are tied up with legal wranglings, or in the case of obviously Robert Freeman, being stolen, or just never shown at all. Locked away, somewhere, kept private. Vivian Meyer is a word that springs to mind there. When I look at Robert Freeman's work, it seems to morph and change, especially the work with, with the Beatles, probably because both of the people, both the Beatles and, and Robert Freeman, are going through that growth phase that, that is so you know, prevalent in the 60s, that going you know, through psychedelia and all those sort of things. And, and a wonderful story that Paul McCartney recounts about the cover of Rubber Soul is that John used to take a piece of card, you know, a little square, piece of card that he would put up on a table to project images onto as potentials for the covers. So he'd done the covers, you know, for the, um, the, the, the Beatles for sale and, you know, with the Beatles. And uh, in addition to doing the help cover, which doesn't mean anything, it's just simply them with some flags and semaphore. So he's showing them images for the forthcoming Rubber Soul album. And 
is projecting them onto that piece of card on the table. And the card slips. Of course, that distorts the image because the image is now not being projected onto a flat thing, it's been projected across. And they went, wow, that, can, can you do this? Can we actually print it like this? And Robert Freeman said, yeah, there's, of course we can do that. There's, you know, there's, there's no big problem. And they loved the idea. So much like those images earlier, you know, thinking about in the hotel corridor and, and things like that, that these, these or, or, iconic photographs just seem to just pop into existence. Accidents are the blessings that often, you know, come out of nowhere and, and change photography or change, you know, photographs. Of course, his career was not just all about, you know, the Beatles, although there's a large portion of it. Robert Freeman was also responsible for photographing the first Pirelli calendar, which at the time wasn't quite the media event that it was, and Wiley said it was quite fun. His real love was, was photographing jazz musicians. You know, that was his, his passion. He was always into that. You know, not, not the Beatles. That was, he was more sort of John Coltrane and all these kind of feelings and moods and black and white. And those are actually the images that he took and sent to Brian Epstein when he was touting for work. And they said, you know, so come over, send some images off to Landudno and, you know, we'll have a look at them. And that's what led to him going to, be to Bournemouth to, to meet the Beatles. <laughs> it said, yeah, there's an album name in there somewhere, I think, right? And, and take those photographs. I just wish that I had the ability to find more of his work. That I, you know, I've looked on the internet, there doesn't seem to be a whole heap there. There are no doubt books around. And if you have resources that you could share with myself or people in the comments about any of his work, I would, I would love to see it because this is a photographer whose background intrigues me greatly, but yet there doesn't seem to be huge amounts of information about him, aside from the obituaries. It is a shame that we live in a world where people are often only fated after their passing. And Robert Freeman, I feel, was one such photographer. And the tragedy of having his archives stolen, both from you know, his, his own family, I mean, they had to, they, to, to, to look after him in his, you know, in his, in his old age, after he'd had a stroke, they had to sell, you know, prints of his to, to raise money for his care. That they didn't, he doesn't get the recognition in his lifetime. Another photographer who felt that he wasn't getting recognition in his own lifetime was a photographer called Bob Carlos Clark. If you haven't seen the video, check it out over here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.